So what's cool when you're a kid? Dinosaurs, robots, Nintendo, yeah. You'd think that all of those elements combined would make for a really cool exhilarating experience. So unfortunately if you bought a game like Dino Wars thinking that this is going to be a great combination of the three then welcome to the 8-bit basement. Because there's so much money behind gaming nowadays, they're referred to as AAA titles. There's so many people working on these projects and there's a lot invested in them. But back then, we just called them video games. So what would it be like to kind of look at games back then through the lenses of how they were produced today? Now I constructed this tier based off of these games as how I saw them as a kid, so there's no legitimate or accurate research that I put into any of this. At the very top we have the flagship games. Known through advertising and marketing, they were the ones that pioneered the genre to be as big as it is today. Beneath that, there's the second tier games. Awesome titles that may not have had the marquee characters, nor the marketing or advertising, but became the backbone of solid gameplay and the passage of time made these titles even more popular because of their contribution to the way games work. And beneath that is the basement. The horrible, smelly, silverfish infested cellar that duped youngsters into wasting a week in game rental. Without the internet, few sources of knowledge for determining good or bad games were magazines or the Game Pro television show. Oh, okay. The cover art features a guy that looks like a Battlestar Galactica droid firing his laser pistol through the jaw of a huge dinosaur that, well, doesn't even look like it's really staring at him. Huh? Could be cool. Well, let's put it in and see what happens. Well, that is pathetic. This is one of the most depressing starting screens I've ever seen in a video game. To say you take up one one hundredth of the screen is calling you too big. You look like short green rice with a helmet. Everything about this is depressing. I mean, look at these enemies just floating. What are they? Wadded up pieces of Werther's that melted in the backseat of a car? I don't know. Do they even know that you're there? They just sort of seem to be floating around aimlessly. And this layout, it looks like a Metroid set threw up on my screen. Let's talk about the controls. Professor Proteus, when he's not busy excite biking, must force you to master some of the most awkward jumping controls ever. For no reason, other than to make me angry, he has this ducking frame right before he goes into a full jump and it locks you into place even while you're walking. It's so unnaturally stiff. You lose confidence with each jump that takes place, especially when you have to hit your mark on moving platforms. Oh, yeah, and if you don't hit your mark on platforms, you're going right through. No exceptions. It defies logical programming in a platform game. Ha oh, snap, we've got Dragon Sword here. I can finally get my mech. Check out that cutscene, you know it's about to get real. Yeah, you know what? I can forgive everything that I've encountered up until now because this is going to be the meat and potatoes of the game, right? I mean, I'm 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 on a giant metal dinosaur. This is going to be awesome. There's going to be aliens zooming around. There's going to be buildings I can smash through. There's going to be lots of carnage and chaos. That up to me, it's going to <laughs> what is what is this? He's got a He's got a little chubby head. <laughs> you 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 must be pulling my leg. You've gotta be pulling my leg. You can't be serious with this. Th this this is your ultimate dinosaur picnic. I'm, I'm essentially controlling Mecha Godzilla, and all I have is this dinky little punch. No fire breath. No sweeping tail. Uh, forget that, kids. It's Rock'em Zock'em Grimlock. D no, no, I'm I'm not I'm not living this down. This right here is a disgrace to 8-bit game design. You do not call your game Dino Wars and then put this in front of me. It's like putting a side salad in front of a 300-pound football player instead of a hearty steak and not expecting violence to ensue. I mean, t take a look at this screen right here. This right here symbolizes Dino Wars to me. It's almost an allegory. Your tiny little dino sprite stuck in the corner, representing the minuscule amount of effort put into a lofty idea. The huge, empty, desolate void of space looming in the background, symbolizing the expectations that could have been met. Were these designers not completely pathetic? 
I mean, Rampage's sprites were about the same size, but that game was infinitely more entertaining. You mean to tell me that you had a game about futuristic giant robot dinosaurs in space, and this is the best idea you came up with? Well, I'm afraid it's only downhill from here. Hey, it's time to talk weapons. First off, when you're the doctor, your standard gun shoots in three directions, fanning out in angles. You can only get off one shot without a power-up, so you have to wait until all of your bullets dissipate before you have to try again. What is this, three for a dollar? Am I playing a carny game? Well, I suggest you watch that tone, young man. Who are you? The name's Rich. Rich Lynn Pockets. And I'm the manager of one of the finest traveling carnivals across the northern United States. How did you get in my house? I used my stick here to break the window. That's great. Can you please leave? I'm afraid I'm not going anywhere yet. I heard you talking bad about one of my favorite carnival games that I've got here. The Dino Wars Knock em Down. Oh, come on. A Dino Wars carny game? Do you honestly think people are going to pay to play that? You're darn right it's a popular game, and everybody else loves it, except for you. You want to know why? Because I don't think that you've got the guts to win it. Tell you what, I'll put something on the line. What do you got? Take down a couple of targets with one shot, and you will get this brand spanking new PlayStation 4 controller with an eternal lithium battery so you don't even have to charge it. Isn't that a Mad Cat's controller from 1998? Absolutely not. So, we got a deal? <laughs> Alright, you're on. Congratulations! And the Dino Mech's weapons aren't any better. They're about as welcome as Kryptonite socks on Superman's feet. First off, the item drops are always a guessing game. You get an indecipherable piece of metal that appears on the ground, and you don't have any clue what it is that you've gotten until after you see it. Imagine if Simon Belmont picked up a hairdryer and he could suddenly throw cats. Oh, there's gotta be something to salvage from this negligible collection of Erector set parts. Hmm, bombs. That's exactly what I've always wanted, an arcing weapon that completely misses the target. Launch fist? It <laughs> better not miss with this thing. The enemy gets to take his turn before you can take yours. Fireball. <laughs> Ooh, isn't that the most daunting fireball you've ever seen in a video game? Just don't use it against Pac-Man. You want my advice? Get the beam. Don't lose the beam. Did that gun turret just bark? The gun turret just barked. And the enemy placement is complete lunacy. There was no thought put into it at all. All you have to do is just simply blast. Blast everything that's in front of you. Avoiding damage isn't an option. Things are gonna hit you. Best get your hands on a long-range weapon and just pick enemies apart. But there's even a problem with that. Some enemies, when you attack them, they no-sell whatever it is you do, or they'll just charge straight at you. And you can't avoid it. The projectiles are ineffective because everything fires so slow. You don't move fast enough or jump high enough to evade anything, so the strategy in this game is kill or be killed. Though when the game demands absolutely nothing from you, it gets old. Repetition gets annoying, and the weapons are rage-inducing. The boss battles require absolutely zero thought or strategy put into it. You get no sense of progression with every level that you beat. It doesn't feel like the game's getting harder or easier, and you get more nuance after a visit to the dentist for a root canal. Huh! <laughs> Great game. Apparently it hasn't played itself! Dino Wars Destruction of Spondylus isn't the worst game in the NES library. Honestly, you don't really have to search too far to find even worse than this. But it is pretty bad. You think a concept like robot, dinosaurs, and space fighting aliens would be a little cooler. But, you know what? There is a bit of good fortune. Because it turns out, Dino Wars was remade, yeah, on PSN and Xbox 360. Let's check it out. Step forward, warrior ghost man, and meet your doom. I'll show you who the real Dino Master is. You can try and stop me if you want, but you won't stand a chance. Troopers, attack! Why didn't you pick up the beam? The beam is the best weapon! Oh no! There's only a couple of them left, sir! Sorry. Oh, okay. Ow. 
Oh. Man, that hurt. It's a heavy ass controller. Good grief. Is there lead in this thing? Ow. Jeez. Hold that for a laugh.